right. We have any edit features later. Okay, we have Neil Bartram and Brian Hill from oh. New York City, straight from Broadway. And we had a couple questions we wanted to ask you. Um, we know it was a very long trip <laughs> <laughs> to very small towns here in northern Arizona. We were wondering if you thought it was worth the trip. Oh, oh. totally worth it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, for so many reasons. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's fine for for kids to get the opportunity to go to New York and see things, but um, you know, I think that there's so much value in coming out to see communities like this that are passionate about musical theater and have it in their programs, and um, you know, to, for us to come and talk about our experiences coming from small towns as well, and then um, ending up, you know, in New York working on Broadway. I think it means a lot to the kids to think that that's the, that's a possibility for them, and and um, you know, for us to come and work with them as well. I think that that the opportunities like that are, are are special to kids. I remember when people came to my high school and worked with us. And I was telling a very similar story about a, a woman that came to my my high school and did a one woman show. And 20 years later, I ran into her on a set of a, a TV show that we were both in. And it, I was so happy to have the opportunity to say to her, "You changed my life." This woman did this one woman, one woman show, blew me away, made me want to be an actor, and here we are. So if we, if we can possibly do that, we love yeah. it. Um, another question they had for you guys is, when you were young, did you ever anticipate at all that you would be singing on Broadway or writing for Broadway? It's something I know I really wanted to do. I never thought it would really happen, but I had enough, uh, enough people that, that got me training and gave me lessons and taught me music and kept that, that kind of stuff in my life that, that it, it led to it and supported all of that. Yeah, I think, I think um, just having an interest and a passion for it, you can't not want that kind of in your future like as a possibility, but uh, actually thinking it was going to happen, I don't, I don't know. So we're, we're pretty lucky, I think. Um, Neil, they were going to ask, because we know that you started with kind of, I think, not Neil Diamond, but Billy Joel. Yeah. You're a big Billy Joel fan. Oh, Billy Joel fan. So did he kind of help launch you a little bit? <clears throat> well, you know, I, I started writing that kind of music. I was really influenced by Billy Joel and Elton John and James Taylor, that type of writer, the singer-songwriter uh, type person. And I, I kind of had aspirations to do that. but. I was always told that my music was too theatrical, the stuff I wrote, which I thought, I didn't really know what that meant at the time. I didn't grow up listening to theater music. And um, so, but now I get it, <laughs> because I think those guys write, the stuff that I like, they write stories. Um, and uh, and, and I, I, that was obviously what was touching me, and theater is all about writing stories. And so that's how I think Billy Joel kind of led me into the theater without really knowing Great. it. And Brian? Um, you did Phantom of the Opera for a while. I did. And what did you play in Phantom? I was an under, a Ra Raoul understudy, and I went on a lot. Good. It was a lot of fun. And, and your next big project is called? Not Wanted on the Voyage. It's going to have a production in Chicago this summer, July and August. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's about? <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's basically the, uh, the story of uh, Noah's Ark and the Great Flood. It's just uh, told <clears throat> in kind of a different way. It's got a kind of modern retelling of that of that uh, story. It uses that story as a launching pad to to look at the the state of the world today, basically. Yeah. And we have one big, huge question. They're they're doing a lot of music cuts now um, because of the government, and we were wondering how important each of you can answer this individually. How important it is to have music programs in the school systems and to keep it in and instead of throwing that as one of the first things that they get rid of in there. I'll jump in immediately. I think it's so important to have music and the arts in, in school. One thing we've been trying to talk to the kids about here is, is that First, first of all, music is all mathematics. I mean, what you learn in music, you apply to other to, to other disciplines, and certainly what you you learn in performance and something we talked to the kids about today is you you will use in job interviews, you'll use in giving speeches, you'll use in just you know self confidence in life to be able to get up on a stage and sing a song is such an important skill to learn. Have that kind of confidence. I think everybody needs that, and that's what these programs offer to, to young people. Yeah, I think that the music programs are interpreted as being easy to cut because, you know, well, really, who, what if those kids is going to make a living as a, in music or theater or anything like that? And, and 
first of all, that's not necessarily true. But second of all, it's beyond. I think music is uh, teaches skills beyond just music. Like Brian was saying, it teaches self confidence. It teaches kids the ability to be on stage, to be able to to, to be in front of people. Uh, skills that they'll use if they go into corporate wor the world, the corporate world, or uh, all kinds of different different areas are influenced by them having that kind of musical training. It's working in a group, feeling like you're part of a, of, a, of a bigger picture, but you have one small part of it. Those are important lessons to learn and, and, um, and music. And this, I'm so sure. No, no, as I say, this is the time when those things are really good to set in. And I was thinking music has been a part of human nature since, since man began. Why would you give that up? Yeah. You know, it's, I forgot one question. I agree with you guys because we come from a very long line of musicians. My grandmother was a honky tonk pianist and oh she cut God. three albums. And then my father became a music professor. Yeah. And then I have a brother that lives in New York <coughs> and he's done an album, which I meant to get to you guys. And I'm a pianist. So, and Kyle, you've met. So we have a long line and we realize that it really does help. Um, we have one sister who's a ballerina. And she would like to know, too, do you guys incorporate any kind of dance and theater? We know the story of my life is just two people, right. not a lot of movement, but in any of your other productions, do you have um, um, a lot of uh, dancers or...? Yeah, we the actually have a piece, the, the one piece we sang tonight, Control, is from a show that's 50% dance. Half, half the cast is, is dancers and half the cast is, is made up of singers. And it's actually... Um, well, it's, it's, it's six people, and three of them are, are, and it's not just dance, it's classical dance. It's told through ballet. Yeah. That, that, um, it's, there's a contemporary story that's told in, in, uh, with musical theater uh, language, and then there's a story that's in the past that plays against it that is told in classical ballet with classical music, and that both stories intertwine. So, yeah. And also, the Not Wanted on the Voyage also has a movement component to it. It's not necessarily dance, but. The associate choreographer for, for the show Fela, which is now on Broadway, is uh, is going to be doing the movement for that. So it's going to be incorporated into Not Wanted on the Voyage as well. And I was a dancer in my younger days as well. Not, yeah. you know, musical theater dancing, basically. But it's, so movement's important to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we appreciate you guys coming all this way. They were well worth the money. Probably <laughs> three times worth the money. They worked very hard. And all the kids absolutely loved you. And we had a great um, We had a blast. We, we loved them. hope yeah. we see you. 20 years from now, and um, we'd love to come back. Oh, awesome! <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kim. And cut, cut. <laughs> I don't know. They're both. I don't see this thing.